A year ago I made this video discussing my dream Persona 6, but coming back to it a year later, it's safe to say I've changed my mind about the whole concept. I was really pushing it with the whole Persona Infinity War thing. It is still a dream of mine to see all casts meet outside of spin-offs in a mainline game, but I did way too much to try and make this sound like Avengers Endgame. It was less of a Persona 6 idea, and more of a how Persona should end idea. While this sounds cool to me as an end of the series type deal, it being Persona 6 is a little much. I really made it sound like this would be the final game of the series, which obviously it won't be. I was just... I don't know. That said, I do very much still want Trinity Soul to be remade into Persona 6. Just not... all that. So here's my Persona 6 idea revised to a far less grand scale. As said before, this is not a request to Atlas or an affirmation that this is what Persona 6 should be. This is simply just my personal dream version of the game. Nothing more than that. Not an essay, not a detailed breakdown, just me sharing what I'd like to see as Persona 6 if they ever make one. Nothing serious. I also won't be touching on gameplay, but purely other elements like story, characters, the tone, etc. Now first and foremost, I'll admit that I haven't seen the entirety of this anime, but I've seen enough of it to grow a fair liking to it. I know a lot of Persona fans didn't particularly like the anime, and kind of disregard it because of how it goes against the lore of the series, at least that's my basic understanding of it. But for me personally, I've always been drawn to this anime for its other aspects. I'm not going to go deep into it, but I just think the anime has a unique and rather beautiful atmosphere and tone to it compared to the games. It has this ambient and supernatural feeling that reminds me of Persona 1 and 2, something I feel like was kind of abandoned in 4 and 5, and it has this particularly beautiful orchestral soundtrack that really encapsulates as much. It's not filled with the usual anime tropes or modern Persona tropes, but instead is pretty serious and grounded. When you watch the first episode, you would never even guess that it's Persona until you see Igor. So after checking it out, and learning that it takes place 10 years after Persona 3, which would also put it after Persona 5 if it was part of the games, I thought, hey, this would be the perfect Persona 6. You've got the cast, the story, the music, and it already takes place in a year that sets it after Persona 5, so why not turn this into a game instead of creating something from scratch? It offers a nice deviation from the usual modern Persona formula to make 6 unique if they're looking to try something new after 5. And it also gives Trinity Soul a second chance instead of being left as a forgotten piece of Persona history. Hell, in Persona 4 Arena, Akihiko talks about becoming a cop in a direct reference to Trinity Soul, which would be a nice setup for the game where we can finally see him in his job. This is even touched upon yet again in Persona 5 through an Easter egg, so all the setups are there. Okay, so there's not a whole lot to change here. What this is is basically just taking the anime and turning it into a game, simple as that. The story, the music, the characters, etc. is all the same. But of course there's got to be a couple tweaks and adjustments to properly incorporate it into the universe of the games, so it lines up nicely with the rest of the series. So the first and obvious change that I would fix is the lore regarding adults using personas, so it's consistent with the rest of the series, as that was most people's major complaint. After that is just tweaks and add-ons, so it feels just a little more Persona. To begin, Igor would of course have more appearances, same as every other game. It starts out the same where Shin and June run into him on the street in a dream sequence, and it's not until later that they're finally taken to the Velvet Room, where Shin recalls being there before as Igor described previously. This time there's no attendant. The occupants there are once again Nameless and Belladonna, who finally make physical appearances again after numerous games of being reduced to off-screen background characters. The Velvet Room itself can still look different though, continuing with tradition, or it can return to form as it was in 1 and 2 given that it won't just be Shin visiting the room. And biggest of all is the return of Filament, who finally appears in human form again, taking his look from either Persona 1 or 2 or maybe even a mix of both. Alternatively, he could at least finally be acknowledged by name again and actually have a speaking role as a butterfly similar to Lavenza in the first half of Persona 5, appearing to Shin and the cast at certain points in the story. Perhaps we could finally get a hint as to why he's been a butterfly for so long and get glimpses of his original form throughout the story. 
Travis Willingham would reprise the role from Persona PSP. Another character I'd like to return is Jose from Royal, where we learn more about his true identity. As you can tell, I'd like for the game to take more cues from 1 and 2 this time around as a sort of return to formula. Not in terms of gameplay, which I can't speak on, but purely from an atmospheric and tonal standpoint. For one thing, I just want the games to finally be acknowledged in mainline games again, outside of anniversary events and loose references. But generally speaking, I also just want to see a return to the more supernatural Shin Megami Tensei feel that the series began with. So there's no marketable mascot character, there's no extravagant way to summon a persona, there's no cognitive realm, no flashy costumes, no beach stuff, just a simple, serious and grounded story. And as for that story itself, it's the exact same as the anime as I said earlier, but with slight alternative events given the changes I've listed thus far, and general adjustments so it once again is in line with the games. As a matter of fact the story is expanded upon for this very reason, giving room for these things to be added, as well as correcting any perceived story flaws that the anime might have had aside from the whole adult persona thing. Now while this isn't the infinity war of persona, there can still be a few cameos or even minor roles from past characters. Akihiko can still show up as a cop and talk to Shin about personas same as the anime. And since it was hinted at that Chie was training in the force as well, maybe she could show up as his partner. If not them, then Makoto is also a viable option. I'd list Katsuya as a good alternative too, but a modern character would probably be better if their ongoing arcs are to be continued. Lastly, a minor but also kind of significant detail is the thematic color for the game. And for that I choose green. I forgot what led me to choosing that color, but there was a logical reason behind it that I think involved the order of colors. Green just makes the most sense to me. Funny thing about this is that the anime actually already kind of adapts this color. It's blue-green which pretty much borders on green, and there's one piece of official art that takes on a green theme entirely, so go figure. So not much to say, but overall there you have it. I know this is most likely not going to happen, and I 100% expect as much, but a guy can dream. I'm definitely in the minority for this, that's for sure. But if there's one thing I can hope for, is that the next game at least breaks tradition and goes back to the tone and atmosphere of 1 and 2, and makes Philemon, as well as Nameless and Belladonna, relevant characters again. If not, then, oh well. What are you gonna do, right? That said, I'm gonna be remaking my other Persona 6 videos and throwing all the music together into one big compilation video to go alongside this one to expand upon this concept further. Until then, I'll see you guys later.